<laughs> oh, it's fun hitting something far away. Look what I've got. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Come on down to the shooting table. Maybe you can figure it out. I'll tell you what, shooting at long range, even with a rifle, uh, I know I do a fair amount of it, but it is hard. It is stressful for me because I do it with iron sights, I guess. And I'm frustrated if I don't hit. Uh, it just takes every ounce of uh, concentration I can I can get together. Well, I'll tell you what it is. You probably already know. It's the uh, the Ruger Gun Sight Scout Rifle. And I thought I'd start out by taking a few shots at 230 yards, just to uh, we've got a 15 inch plate hanging over there. And boy, does it look small through these sights. It has good sights, but I mean to tell you, sometimes go out on the range with whatever rifle you have with your your favorite sights and. And look at something about that big at 230 yards and it's like a little bitty speck out there and the least little bit of motion it's just harder than it looks uh i tell you of course i guess i ought to lie down and get you know prone or something and i could uh, hold a little bit uh, steadier but this is the gun sight uh rifle if you know jeff cooper if you've ever heard of jeff cooper if you haven't shame on you but uh for decades i guess he promoted a firearm like this uh, the the construction the uh, the innovation of it uh, he really was I guess the innovator you could say he thought that there was a place for a gun like this a bolt gun of uh, powerful caliber you know powerful enough like 308 he was a, a huge advocate of it and a bolt gun that would hold maybe a little bit more than four or five rounds something like this with a uh, detachable magazine in a gun that was fairly lightweight, uh, roughly six and a half pounds, he thought was ideal, and around a yard long, you know, a yard, a meter long. And uh, he felt like that gun would uh, do a person well in almost any application. It would do, what did he say, a, a gun that would do a great many things equally well, I think was a direct quote uh, of Jeff Cooper. And he worked with several companies over the years, and finally Steyr, came up with one, it was pretty expensive. I think as it came out, it was around $1,500, but uh, something like that. And then Savage, I believe has one, and now Ruger. But uh, the concept's a little different than your average hunting rifle. This is a Model 77 Ruger, but it has uh, the forward mounts for the uh, uh, scope, optics, whatever you want to put on it out here. You got your Picatinny rail. But one of the biggest differences is having a uh, scope mounted uh, forward of the receiver, forward of the bolt. That's pretty weird. You know, normally when you see a, a scope, on some kind of optical sight on a uh, on a gun, a rifle, a uh, particularly a bolt gun, it's sitting right here. You know, but uh, the concept. Now I don't have a sight for an optical sight yet. Uh, I might put something on. I don't know. Uh, right now we have our, uh, our good little uh, Ruger sights that came with it, the uh, Ghost Ring, which I like, and uh, they, they suffice. But uh, that's the big difference right there. And then the fact you have a detachable magazine in a bolt gun, kind of unusual. Let's go over to the table and I'll look at it, show you a little bit uh, more closely. And we'll take some more shots, okay? We've been plinking around with, I've got three or four left in there. And I have an empty, I should, in the magazine, right? Yeah, or in the uh, chamber. So let's take a look at it. Uh, we brought the Mauser out. First thing, let's just show you right away. The, uh, the bolt, should be pretty good because guess what it's patterned after if you look at this mauser and look at the extractor and the claw and everything on that uh, there are some similarities there aren't there so if you're going to copy something which <laughs> I think about every bolt gun has the last oh, 60 years or so or 100 years it, it most of the good bolt guns have copied the mauser to some extent so I thought I'd bring that out and show you so it does uh, uh, remind you of that so we got a good strong bolt and we have a detachable magazine. Not many guns you see that hold 10, uh, 15, who knows, someone might come out with a 50 round magazine, a banana clip for the bolt gun. <laughs> but uh, that always makes it a little bit easier to, to work with. Of course you do have the magazine uh, protruding, you know, sticking down there. So kind of interesting uh, concept with a, uh, a bolt gun, isn't it? But you got the, the Ruger Gun Sight Scout. It's a pretty gun too. This is a T&E gun Ruger sent me. I uh, requested it. This has been on my list of uh, to-dos for a while, ever since I saw it at the 
the NRA convention about a year and a half ago. I thought, oh, that is nice. Oh, look at that. You got the gun sight uh, logo there. So the neat thing about this is, too, it was not some guys at Ruger sitting in a room somewhere decided to, to make a gun like this necessarily. Well, maybe they did. But gun sight, as I understand, had a major role in developing and, you know, the specs and everything on this gun because they sort of know and knew what Cooper was up to. Jeff Cooper ran Gun Sight Training Center for uh, decades, I guess. He is the guru and uh, a huge proponent of the 1911, ex-Marine, uh, writer, gun writer, very erudite fellow. If you've read any of Cooper, uh, he's very, he's an intellectual, basically, and uh, an avid shooter, you know? So, I mean, they can go hand in hand. Everybody's not like me. He was really bright, he, he really was. Uh, and unfortunately, he's passed on. But uh, he has left a legacy in uh, many different ways. But uh, this is one of them right here, the gun sight scout rifle. Uh, I've always been fascinated with it. I really have, ever since I, I read some of his early writings about it. And I, yeah, it's kind of interesting. But, you know, it just never did show up. You know, I think some people, uh, I don't know, cannibalized guns and, and put some things together early on. Uh, mounted, you could drill and tap, I guess a lot of uh, maybe a Remington 700 and put a scope out here and, and worked on it, shortened the barrel and you could, uh, there were some people doing that. But by and large, off the rack, you just couldn't find really uh, for any reasonable price for a long time what Cooper was talking about and what he was writing about. And uh, that has changed wonderfully, you know, with uh, the Savage and with this. I'm not sure what the, uh, the uh, Stire is selling for, if it's even still available. I should be loading while I'm yakking. But uh, it's an interesting concept. I, uh, I've been uh, interested in it. I just have not done anything about it for a good while. And I, I like a bolt gun. I don't shoot bolt guns as often as others probably. But you have some advantages with a bolt gun, don't you? You, uh, you don't have that semi-automatic feed where uh, you know, it would be more ammo sensitive and that sort of thing. Anything that will chamber correctly, of course, you can put in there. And uh, it will work, All right? You could load one of these down to 500 feet per second, I guess, if you wanted to. You don't have to worry about a, a bolt operating at a certain speed and all that kind of thing. Uh, bolt guns are considered to be very accurate. You know, that is one of the things they have going for them, uh, even in a short barrel. Now, the way I shoot, I don't, I won't get the, you know, the ultimate accuracy out of a bolt gun because I don't bench rest them and that sort of thing. Uh, the most I do and try to get out of a rifle is what you just saw, probably shooting something, you know, like that big out of 230 yards. If I can hit something that far, and, and that's really what this gun was designed for. Uh, as I recall reading, combat accuracy out to three, 400 yards. That's what he was looking for. A gun that you could take and hunt, you know, really handy, fairly light, very accurate, powerful cartridge that was just handy to, to handle and uh, you could use for hunting or for combat if you had to for just about any purpose a nice ranch rifle it's another one of those you know i kind of like uh, smaller handguns i like smaller uh, even rifles that are powerful think of the uh, marlin i have uh, the 4570 it's even shorter than that i think so there's just something cool about a gun like this with that kind of power uh, the accuracy in a, in a package like this let's take a couple more shots here uh, a little bit closer and I'll probably miss. One thing I'm not sure about is the magazine. It's, it's a little bit awkward to load. I would, uh, I'd have to have two or three of those or four of those, I think, and uh, get them all loaded up and then go out and have my fun. They're a little awkward to load, more so than a, a M1A magazine and, uh, and that sort of thing. Seems to work fine. Seems a little bit loose, but it works fine. Okay, so let's get some ears on. It is loud. Now we can't shoot our steel here much. We've got another plate over there we could pop a little bit. Whew. Okay, see if I have any concentration left here. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Misses hard too. I'm trying to bracket it. I went over it, I think, the first shot, under it the second. There we go. Well, actually, I hit it the first shot. 
All right, uh, what else do I want to show you? Oh, we got some things to blow up here. Let's try this green one. <laughs> yeah, 308 will take them out. Not much question about that. <laughs> yeah, when you're popping something with a 308, you are hitting it hard. Wonder if it'll knock that bowling pin off. <laughs> I think so. One more round. Oh, there's another bowling pin. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, it doesn't hurt either. I mean, it, it punches you a little bit, but uh, it has a really nice recoil pad on it. I've, I've noticed that. Uh, the other thing, I'll point out a couple of things here. The, uh, it has spacers that come with it, and you know I like that. You know I like that. Uh, in fact, I put one in. It had uh, two extras with it uh, that came that were not uh, you know, installed. It, has, it came with one installed, I believe it was, with just a pad. And so I just went ahead uh, to provide a little Allen wrench. You stick it in here, find the bolt there, or loosen it, loosen it, the Allen nut, and take this off, and then you can add or, or subtract. You can take away. So I, of course, with my length of pole, I added one, and it feels pretty good. I wouldn't want any more, I don't think, because I mean, you don't want to make the gun this long. You kind of lose the purpose, don't you? Uh, so I guess better to err on the side, side of being a little bit too short, if anything. But it feels pretty good to me right now. So that's nice having that flexibility on length of pull. If you have a short length of pull, you could take all those out, and it'd probably feel really good to you. Uh, what else about this I haven't pointed out yet? The uh, trigger. It's a nice trigger. It really does. It uh, really, you know, that uh, Mauser, uh, we have a video or two on that. That one has a Timney trigger in it. This one feels like the same thing. It's really sweet. In fact, uh, I found myself missing early on when I was just trying it out because I was expecting a hard break, and it, it's not. It's a really sweet trigger. That is one of the pauses on this gun for sure. No doubt about it. Like I say, I'm not sure about that magazine. I, I have any trouble, but... Uh, other than being difficult to load, more so than a M14 or an AR-15 Mac. Uh, uh, everything seems to work very positively. I like the safety reposition. You can really lock it up there, lock the bolt up, or just uh, safe mode right there. You can work the bolt, in safe, and then fire. Uh, easy and in good position there. The bolt comes out easily, just like the Mauser. Pull this out, and uh, there it is. It's always nice to clean from the breach, you know, when you can. Uh, for you new shooters, that's uh, that's always ideal. If you can get to the to the chamber and work from behind, it's always better than working from the muzzle, generally speaking. Okay, good sights. Uh, it looks good. I like that. Uh, in fact, that looks just like my Marlin 4570, doesn't it? That STP I got recently. So uh, that's you know I like that. That's pretty. And. What else about this? Uh, the Picatinny rail that I pointed out. It, uh, as I think it has a free-floating barrel. I've seen in the uh, the videos and various things. Uh, I've seen Tom Gresham and his crew and everything put a piece of paper through there. You know, it's so it's 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 bedded properly, and to you know get the utmost accuracy out of it. You got your flash suppressor, and I was reading in the manual. I don't often read the manuals. Occasionally I mess up and read a little bit, but. You can uh, take this off and uh, put a different one on if you like. It has uh, whatever the standard kind of threads are for that. So I like it. Oh, yeah, you got your uh, sling uh, attachments there. So it's ready to go. So here I am. I should, I'm going to shoot some NATO ammo, too. I've got some NATO. We'll try that. We were, we were shooting uh, some PMC there, uh, 308 to begin with, 760 NATO, 147 grain. And uh, this is, I think it's Lake City, this that I've had for a while. So we'll load up a little bit of this, take a few more shots. But I'm really get, glad to get a hold of this thing. Uh, this, is a, this is a neat little gun. Ever since I've uh, picked it up the first time. And I have run across a couple. You don't see them too often, you know, in uh, gun shops. I think they're having a hard time with the supply, I would guess. Because they're really in demand. Uh, very desirable little gun. So we're going to take a couple shots across the hill. And maybe... If we have anything left here that needs to be blown up, we'll uh, take care of it. Okay. Again, if you don't know who Jeff Cooper is, 
you ought to, oops, you ought to read up on it a little bit because uh, he was the man, gun sight guru, gun sight still in operation under different management, and uh, it's good enough. And this was his baby, his concept. And I am proud to try it out. What do we have here? Okay. I'm going to try that plate again. I don't like missing it. Let's get uh, confident here. I'm going to try uh, one of those red bowling pins over there hanging. I think the sights are pretty much on, best I can tell. So I might not be able to use that as an excuse if I miss. There we go. Yeah, he danced a little bit. Let's try the other one. Get a little dark over there. If I scared him or not. Yeah, he's moving a little bit. Uh, and that would be one advantage of having an optic sight. Uh, I might, you know, I'm not much on optics. I might think about a red dot or something to try on this thing. I kind of like it. I'm going to go back over there at that uh, plate a couple more shots. Lost my target in the dust. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> a bolt gun, I guess in some ways, it's like a revolver. You know, you don't ever want to assume somebody's unarmed because all they have is a bolt gun because uh, very can be very effective. And uh, this is about as handy as you can get. Now, you know, it's a pumpkin season, so uh, we just can't resist. Jeff Cooper, this one's for you, buddy. <laughs> All right, rolled him off there. So we've got an empty uh, brass in the chamber there now. And uh, I guess we've probably shot him enough for you. I had a round left. Uh, you don't see me do that very often, do you? In fact, you're not going to see me do it today. we got to fire that bitch. we got to hit something. There we go. One round left at, uh, can't do that. So, uh, gun sight, uh, scout rifle. That is a, a really neat package. And, uh, <laughs> there's so many neat guns, aren't there? That, that's the problem in this world. There's too many really cool firearms. And, uh, I've been fortunate enough to play with a lot of them. And, uh, I hope you're enjoying that. Because we enjoy bringing them to you. But, uh, this is one I've had my eye on for quite a while since it first came out. I am really glad to, uh, to take a look at it and shoot a little bit. We'll do some more with it. I might even get some kind of red dot to put on there and let you know what I think about that and see how that shoots. But uh, my first impressions of it, you know, I just picked it up yesterday, okay? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't know when we'll post this necessarily, but I just got the gun yesterday evening about this time. And uh, so I just like to go ahead and start shooting them and make a video and uh, give you a look at it because uh, I just like to shoot. And I think you've noticed that life is really good. <laughs>